We're out here at Full Mile Brewing Company in Sun Prairie here with Mike Johnson and Alyssa Martin. We're going to be talking about how to determine what's a trend and what's a fad in employee benefit plans. Topic number one, pet insurance. Trend or fad? Trend. Why? Fad. I think it's a trend because when you're in the heat of the moment, in the emergency room with your pet, do you really have the wherewithal to make that decision on a dollar amount on your pet's life? If you have pet insurance, you have a deductible and you know your pet's going to be taken care of. Good point. Good point. My fad is because of math. <laughs> I'm a dog lover, so don't take this the wrong way, everyone. <laughs> but here's a statistic that everyone uses. A vet bill, a pet owner will face a vet, vet bill of $1,000 or more every one second. So it sounds scary, but when you back the math out, there's about 185,000 dogs and cats in this country today. That gives you a 3% chance of hitting a $1,000 plan or not. You have to do the cost-benefit ratio to figure that out. Makes sense. All right, topic number two, benefit decision support technology. Trend. Trend as well. Okay. Um, I think it's a trend because if you have a company that has multiple locations, it's a great way to get the communication out to everyone. And also, if um, you know you don't want to make your employees make that decision on the spot, you want to give them the opportunity to take it home, view the benefit plans with their families to make their decisions. Makes sense. I'm saying trend just because access to information and technology is only going to improve. We're just on the precipice of really having this take off. It's a trend. Okay. All right. Reducing your costs solely through going out to bid. <laughs> Fad. Fad. Stop it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So we're in agreement here. Alyssa, yes. go for it. Um, it's a fad because the price of your benefit plan is not solely based on the design of your plan. It's based on the environment around your plan, okay. how people utilize it, how they take advantage of it. And you want to look at that before you look at changing any types of your plan. Makes sense. Agreed. What she said next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Student loan repayment. Here's a hot topic. I'm going to say fad. I'm saying trend. Oh, disagreement, Alyssa. Yes. It's a trend because three out of four students entering the workforce have student loan debt up to $37,000. That's a lot. And to be able to have your employer help with that or help facilitate that at least, um, that could take a lot off their mind so that they can get back to work. Makes sense. I 100 percent agree that it makes sense for some organizations. The reason I'm calling it a fad, adoption is not very high right now outside of Fortune 100 companies, simply because of taxes. You don't get a benefit from offering a, a student loan repayment as you would a 401k or traditional benefit plan. Okay. It's taxable income, therefore there's not a big advantage for companies to offer. That's why I call it fad. Makes good sense. All right, this is one we've been hearing a lot about lately. Genetic testing as an employee benefit. Trend. Trend. Okay. Um, I think it's a trend because it can only help with early detection of any kind of genetic diseases that you might yeah. have. And with the GINA Act of 2008, all of that genetic information is private and your employer can't use it. So you're safe and you get to learn more about what could be affecting you in the future. Sure. I'm also saying trend. It's very, very early in this benefit and we don't 100% know how accurate it is. The medical community is fairly convinced that you're giving uh, employees very sensitive information that they may or may not be able to handle. Just because you genetically test higher level of potential cancer doesn't mean you have a diagnosis. It's still a trend to watch, a lot to go through. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Here's one that I know a lot of people probably have struggled with in the past, uh, infertility benefits. What, what about that? Trend. Trend. Trend? Okay. Yeah. On average, infertility benefits can cost up to $23,000 for couples. Um, and if your employer can help with that, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a really attractive benefit. A study showed that employees are four times more happy with their employer if they know that they're taking care of them and their families, and I think this can really add to it. Wow. Agreed with what Alyssa said. It's also a risk mitigation strategy for some people for certain demographics. If people are trying to have high-risk pregnancies, that will have an impact on the health plan. Therefore, they're being more open to looking at covering infertility treatments that generally are not covered. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Last one we've got here. Reference-based pricing. Trend or fad? Trend. I'm going to go fad. Oh, disagreement. Alyssa. Yeah. I think it's a fad because even if hospitals do adapt to this, they're only getting a percentage of what Medicare pays. And even if that's 200%, it doesn't make up for the cost that they would be charging. It also puts a huge responsibility on employees to take care of them, to take ownership of their health care. Okay. And I just don't think employees are ready to adapt to that. Sure. What do you think, I'm Mike? I'm calling it a trend because people are sick of rising costs of health care. And she's dead on with the points that she brought up. People are willing to fight that fight. 
However, asterisk alert, um, <laughs> there is a Supreme um, Appeals Court hearing on reference-based pricing. And if that goes the way of the providers, the providers are basically saying this should be illegal, it's a breach of contract, blah, blah, blah. That is going to de basically determine which way reference-based pricing goes. Are we trending or is it gonna be a fad overnight? We don't know yet, pay attention to that. Interesting, well, we've got about 100 more of these to go, but alas, <laughs> that'll be another video for another day. Um, to, to follow up on this, Mike's going to be writing an article soon talking about how to craft an intentional benefits program because really whether something's a trend or whether something's a fad really depends a lot on your philosophy as an employer and how you choose to craft your benefit plan. So check out the link below to, to that article and you can read a little bit more about that here. It'll be good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it'll be real good. Um, so next week when we talk, you're, we're going to look at once you've crafted a fantastic benefit plan, how do you communicate that to your employees because employees generally don't necessarily like engaging with benefits because it's confusing and time consuming. So how can you communicate that value to your employees? That'll be next week's episode here. So in the meantime, be sure to like us on LinkedIn, follow us on Facebook, and subscribe to our videos on YouTube to make sure you're in the loop here. Guys, thank you for coming out. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Gross. Gross.